Welcome everybody to Otter Talk number 26 on handling your own otter hound in confirmation. Thanks for being here. And thank you to uh, Sarah McQuitty for setting this one up. Tonight we have Nancy Lang and Katie Wright helping us out and uh, discussing the benefits of handling your own dog. Um, if you have any questions during the presentation, um, feel free to put it in the chat or uh, go ahead and unmute your microphone and uh, ask away when there's a, a break. Both Katie and Nancy have said that they'll welcome questions during the presentation. So thank you ladies for doing this Otter Talk. I really appreciate both of you being here and being so helpful. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, let me go ahead and share a little agenda here. Uh, the screen share. Oh, oh, we're there. We're almost there. I promise. <laughs> okay, I think. Can we everyone see it there? Yep, looks good, Katie. All right. Um, so we thought. So this is a the, like Robin said, a presentation on sort of what it is to be an owner handler, how to get involved, all the great benefits to it. Um, so Nancy, if you wanna go ahead and introduce yourself. Okay, um, I'm Nancy Lang. Um, I am part of Oh Heavens Otter Hounds and started um, uh, owning Otter Hounds in 2001. And one of the reasons um, uh, many years ago, um, I started out, um, quite honestly, um, hiring people to show my dogs. And after a couple of years, um, I decided that um, it was more important for me and my daughter, Carmen, to start showing our own dogs. And it has been a absolutely wonderful um, <clears throat> road to travel down. And um, we've enjoyed it immensely. And I absolutely uh, believe that um, being an owner handler has so many wonderful um, opportunities. Katie? Um, so I am Katie Wright of Right Way Otter Hounds. Um, so I got started because Nancy said, why don't you try one puppy show? <laughs> and here I am eight years later, um, I have two grand champions that I finished myself. Um, it's been a wonderful experience. I got Penny, my, my first otter hound right out of grad school. And I was kind of looking for something to be involved with and dog shows kind of seemed to fit, fit the bill. There's a great group of people that we have here in Southwest Michigan that really make dog shows something special for us. So, um, that's kind of me. <laughs> um, so we kind of have a, a short agenda here of things we really wanted to cover. So one of those things is how to prep your dog on your own for a dog show. So um, we felt one of the biggest things is home training. So things that you can do that you probably may already do in your home to help prepare for a dog show. Um, one of the biggest things for me is crate training. Generally, when we're at a dog show, the way that they're set up a lot of the waiting time. Dog shows are a lot of hurry up and wait. And that waiting is done in a crate for many dogs. And having your dog kind of used to being in a crate helps so much of the show. So that takes one piece of that anxiety away. Nancy, the other, do you thing, the other thing about the home training um, is that uh, make sure that you take um, off a regular collar put on a show collar, which can either be a nylon uh, choker or a, a metallic um, choker. Um, and you can, I, many a times I have been running up and down um, my driveway inside uh, the garage just to get the dog, um, you know, used to being on a certain um, uh, leads and collars so that they know that that is for the dog show. The other thing for home training that I uh, particularly used is that there are videos of our national specialties. And I have always um, watched particular handlers on videos. And then at home, I try to mirror that 
Um, one of the um, handlers that I loved to watch many years ago was Michael Brantley. And um, of course, you know, our um, present day handlers um, you know, is either, you know, Holly or uh, Jason, um, and who else is a good one to watch? Danny Goodland. So you can get a lot of good um, suggestions about how to train your dog by watching them and um, by picking up some of the stuff that they do. Yep, Maybe? and I, I would add uh, one more thing to the home training stuff is the basic obedience um, that you might use in your everyday house can actually be used in the dog show, you know, teaching them how, or the importance of taking treats or finding treats that they like. Some, some dogs can be pretty picky. I find that string cheese is usually a pretty safe go for an otter hound, but, um, really kind of getting to know your dog and getting them used to, to you and, and communicating with your dog and building that teamwork. Um, all of that can be done at home. And then where that kind of slides in, the next thing is training classes. Um, generally, if you contact your local training club or your local kennel club, they're going to be able to kind of point you in the direction of where there might be some handling classes. Uh, I did handling classes with Penny for probably a year and a half straight. And we did enter dog shows before then, but every Wednesday night I was at the local training club practicing with Penny trying to understand because I will I will tell you when Nancy asked me to do that puppy show I said I've watched it on tv it can't be that hard that that was a mistake that was not correct that was not a, cor a correct um thought and going to those weekly uh classes really kind of allowed me to understand what judges are looking for and that it's not just running, that there's actual gating patterns to this. <laughs> um, there's actual ways to stack the dog that, that you know, enhance certain features, take away other features. There, there's a lot, there can be a lot to it. Can be very simple, but there can be a lot to it. And going to those classes kind of let you perfect those things. And even though I have been doing this for 21 years, I am still taking my dogs to training classes. Um, last night, um, I took the puppy and I took Beaker. So it's something that, um, you know, I consistently do, not only for um, the dog, but um, I'm learning new things as I go along. Yeah, most definitely. Those classes are huge. And, and it's big for you as a handler, but also for the dogs. Um, you know, there is no show there, there is no atmosphere that is exactly like a showground, but a dog training class is about as close as you're going to be able to get um, before actually entering a show. So it doesn't hurt to get your dog around other dogs and kind of teach them and show them that, you know, you still interact with me, even though there's other dogs around and definitely learning how to keep your dog in your space away from the other dogs and the other handlers, because not every dog wants you know, your dog up in their business. Um, the next thing we wanted to hit on quick was grooming. And I think that can kind of be looped back into the home training. Um, by grooming, I don't mean that you have to do extravagant things, but your dog needs to know what it is to have a comb and a brush through its hair before you enter it in a show. Cause you're gonna wanna do a little brush up. You're gonna wanna make it look good before you enter the ring and you don't want your dog's first experience grooming to be at a show. Um, so you wanna make sure that you're taking all the opportunities you have to really get into that grooming beforehand. It's much easier for you to do the grooming being up on a table. So they, they uh, need to get used to having a noose around their neck. Um, they need to get used to having, you know, comb, slickers, brushes, um, people walking around, you know, the table and, um, you know, they, they adjust fairly quickly, but, um, even if I don't have my dogs out, like when, uh, during COVID, when we were all home for a year and a half, um, I still would put my dogs up, um, on the table at minimum once a week to brush them out and keep them used to that. Yeah. 
Yep. And, and if you need specific grooming tips, um, I would say that's a great thing to ask maybe your breeder if, if they're into showing where many of our breeders are. Um, to ask the breeder, ask uh, any other breed mentors that you have, ask anyone active in the club. We're a generally pretty open group that, that's open to answering questions and, and helping out. I know the last national I went to, I helped a couple dogs out in the parking lot um, understand how to groom a beard because that, that can be an art. <laughs> um, the next thing we wanted to kind of hit on was socialization. Um, and this also can kind of fall back into the home training and the training classes is that it is super important that your dog's first trip out of the house is not to a dog show. Um, that's where we start seeing dogs maybe put in an uncomfortable situation and, and not be as maybe happy as we would hope they would be at a dog show. So I love taking my dogs to, um, like department, not department stores, like hardware stores. Like we go to Lowe's a lot. We've been to Home Depot. Um, there is a craft store in town that will let them in. So kind of doing your, your Google research beforehand and finding out where you can take them. Um, and then training classes, training classes don't, uh, if you're going to do confirmation, you should do a confirmation class, but um, basic obedience classes are a great place to gain socialization as well. Tractor supply is another good one that will allow um, dogs in. And, um, you know, this is extraordinarily important because um, Katie and I, when we go out to dog shows now, um, we're seeing a lot of dogs that are anxious because of our year and a half of COVID where they none of the dogs got to go anywhere. So um, it, it's pretty common at this point you know, to hear about, oh, this was a COVID dog. Um, you know, I start socializing um, the puppies as soon as um, they have their shots and the vet says they can go out. Um, I think it's very important to start young and just make it as happy-go-lucky as you can. I agree. Um, so let's say you've done all of your home training, your classes, you've started your grooming experience and you've socialized your puppy and you're ready to enter a dog show. Um, one of the things that you might be wondering is why enter a dog show? Um, like I kind of shared in my intro, it's, it's a great opportunity to meet other like-minded people, um, to meet people within your breed, uh, meet people that are just generally in the show world. Nancy and I live fairly close to each other. So we kind of run in the same dog show friend circles of the, the hound group of Michigan is kind of what we call ourselves. But yeah. uh, I can call up a beagle person if I have a puppy question, she'll answer right away. Um, you know, I, Nancy has, has similar connections that we can literally ask anyone in the hound group. And I guarantee you they'd answer us that they are an amazing group of people and if I hadn't been in dog shows, I wouldn't have known them. I wouldn't have had those connections. Would you agree, Nancy? Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, you know who I'm talking about with the Beagle people. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> um, so when you enter a dog show, it can be kind of, kind of, interesting or tricky if you have, haven't done it before and I believe Robin there's an otter talk on how to enter a dog show um, but the classes that we kind of wanted to highlight is that if your first time entering a dog show as an owner handler um, generally you're going to be picking from the puppy classes the amateur owner handler class the novice class or the open class um, Puppy class obviously is for puppies. Amateur owner handler is a, a special one to me. Um, I actually won a major out of a, the national specialty out of the amateur owner handler class. And what that means is you've never championed a dog before. Um, so, you know, that's that kind of lets the judge know that you're new, um, but that doesn't necessarily take away from your judging criteria or what the expectation is. It just kind of lets them know that. You're, you're a newbie and it's okay to be a newbie. Um, the other classes are novice and open. Novice is if you are an experienced handler, but your dog is new. Um, and then open is generally where the dogs that aren't puppies are entered. 
And I really, really encourage that any, anyone that is starting out with owner um, handler, that they use that amateur owner handler um, you know, class. The judges seem to be much more um, laid back if your dog is you know, a little fidgety or if you aren't holding the lead correctly, they will help you. Um, I just find that the judges are a lot more, um, what's the word I'm looking for, Katie? Like forgiving? Accepting. Yeah, forgiving is a good word too. A lot more patient too. Patient. Yes. And, like um, you know, like Katie said, um, she actually got um, two um, amateur owner handler um, four or five point majors at the nationals out of that class back to back. So they will look at you seriously out of that class. And it's just a better and until you get your first major, that's the one that I would stick with. Yeah, I, I fully support that group and uh, they're that class. I think it, it lets the judges know that you want to be taken seriously, but you also recognize that you're there to learn. And I've had judges give me wonderful, um, I would call them more of like critiques of, of, you know, making sure that when you do a down and back, you're, you're going straight, you're not wandering off the mats. <laughs> um, just kind of good advice that you can take back to your training class and be like, hey, the judge mentioned this. Um, can we work on that? And most trainers would be open to that. Um, the last thing in dog shows we wanted to mention was the check the owner handler box. So when you do an entry, you're, even though you might be an owner handler, you don't get entered into the owner handler competitions and the owner handler series, unless you check the box. Um, I, there, Nancy, do you have anything more to say about that? I know I've been stuck before and I didn't check the box and I thought I did. Yes, because the, the first um, class that you'll enter is either in the puppy or the amateur owner handler um, or any class that you want. And the second um, box, you have to put in the owner handler. And the one other thing that I wanted to mention about the classes that you enter, when you decide that you want to come out of the amateur uh, owner handler and go into something more like open, the judges at that point will have the same expectation of you as they will from me, Katie, or any handler. They will just have, um, they will expect you to be able to present your dog at a little higher level. So, um, you know, you can make the choice at that point, whether you think that you're ready to move into that open um, spot. And uh, usually the dogs are older than um, 12 to 18 months before they go into open. Can I add something about checking the owner handling box? Sure. Absolutely. So here's a good pointer. So if you're, you know, you've been practicing um, or you've been on the fence about having a, a professional handler or you've had a professional handler and now you're considering handling by yourself. Um, in any of those instances, you can always check the box for owner handler and have somebody else handle your dog, but you can't do the reverse. You can't not check the box and then um, handle your dog and be in part of the owner handled series. So it doesn't hurt at all to check the box, even if you, you know, chicken out at the last minute or you decide to have somebody else do it or what have you, um, somebody that doesn't have, own the dog. Um, it's always best to check the box, even if you don't use it, then to not check the box and wish you had. Right. Well, and the the other thing, yeah, when I, you're I, doing owner I, handler, the, um, the person who owns the dog has to take it into the class and that person or another owner of that dog can then go into group. And let me give you an example, you know, Find my as dogs. paperwork. What, hon? I said it, owner as defined by a person on the AKC paperwork, not just that some. Is correct. So Carmen and I both own Beaker. So I can go into, um, you know, the champion class with Beaker. I can show her. I can be given owner handler breed. 
I can bring her out because Carmen is also an owner. She can take her into group. Um, but you can't have like me uh, go into owner handler and then me turn around and try to get Katie to take Beaker into the uh, group. You can't do it. it. It's against the rules. Yeah, you would lose any points that you got in owner handler. You would be ex excused from that ring. It has to be that ring in owner handle groups. That group is only owner handlers, whereas the regular group can be either professionals and owners, any combination. The owner handle group has to be the owner of record on the dog. And I would add too, so I used to help my friend around here with some curly coated retrievers. And there would be times that she would <clears throat> think that she was gonna be handling the dog. So she would mark that box. And then beforehand, if we knew she wasn't gonna be able to make the ring time and I was taking the dog in, I would tell the ring steward ahead of time that um, we needed to scratch that owner handler. So that it kind of helped the ring flow quicker uh, when it came down to that point for the judge because you don't want to be standing there going, oh, are you or aren't you? So it kind of kind of helps the, the whole process of the show if you know it's not owner handler to tell them ahead of time. Good point. Um, so the owner handled series. So what that is, is a competition within the dog shows. And mm -hmm. Nancy mentioned that you win owner handler breed. Um, and there's like a point system to that. And then if you win the breed, you go into the group. And these are all just dogs that are owned and handled by the, by those people in the ring. Um, and it kind of all adds up to a ranking system with finals. Nancy, do you want to kind of go into deeper detail about that? About the point system? Sure. So with the point system, it's totally different than that of the regular um a variety group and so if you get a first place in the group um you receive 25 points if you get a second place you receive 20 points third place is 15 fourth place is 10. Um, when you go into the breed ring even if you're the only person that's owner handler and you get an owner handler a uh, breed win, you automatically get five points. So these points add up um, to uh, within a, a total year. The qualifying period for this year was September 21st of 2022 through September uh, 20th of 2023. That's the um, system that we're in right now. Now, last year, it ended on September 8th, I believe, in 2022. And they take the total number of points for that entire year and add it up for your particular breed. And you come up with, um, you know, one through 10. Those one through 10 rankings will be invited to the AKC National Owner Handler Series that occurs every year about the second week of December down at Orlando, um, Florida. And that's when the top 10 at that point will go in um, the breed ring and compete. They will pick the one best of breed that will represent our breed in the hound group. And then um, the judge um, will uh, uh, judge the regular group. Both Katie and I, as owner handlers, have both made the cuts down to the final like six um, dogs in the hound group. So it's it's possible, and um, you know you just it, you have fun trying to do it, and um, and it's 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 really great. Um, there's one other thing that I want to say is that if you get a reserve best in show. Um, at any of these um, local shows, it's 75 points. And if you get a best in show, which is possible, right, Katie? Because <laughs> yeah. both Katie and I have gotten best in shows, it's an additional uh, 100 points. So um, you can uh, look up this information on the American Kennel Club site. And um, every week, 
the AKC will go in for rankings and you actually can um, look it up on the www.apps.akc.org and um, it will um, show you the um, series rankings. And um, I'm looking at it right now for um, 2023. Very good. Um, so what I would add in there is Nancy said, you know, it's possible. So I, I guess this will tie into my biggest piece of advice in a few minutes is that, you know, having a rare breed dog um, doesn't mean that it's going to be harder for you to show it. It doesn't mean any of that. I feel like there's a pretty level playing field within the owner handler rings that allow dogs of all shapes, sizes, and breeds um, have a chance at succeeding and doing well. So I, I find that it's, it's a neat atmosphere to be in, and there is nothing like going down to Orlando. That is, that's an experience in itself. I have one thing to add, Katie, if you don't mind too. And I agree with all of that. I've, I've competed with you in that ring with yeah. <laughs> my otter hound. And I also have done it with other breeds of dogs and, and it is a thrill. Um, one thing I wanted to point out too, though, that's unique to owner handling is that it doesn't matter how big the show is. So those points that Nancy mentioned are fixed. So it's always going to be that many points, whether it's a dog show with 100 dogs or a dog show with 5,000 dogs. It's always five points for owner handled best of breed. It's always 10 points for an owner handled group four. So those are static. They stay the same no matter how big the dog show, whereas the regular point system in the AKC is based on the number of dogs that you defeat. So it's kind of nice and owner handled. It doesn't matter how many there were. You get those points no matter what. Yep. Correct. So Nancy, what do you feel is your biggest piece of advice for someone maybe new to owner handling? You know, what I have learned and what I encouraged Katie, or excuse me, Carmen, um, my daughter, is that try to mirror as much as possible what the pros do. And a big piece of that is the way you are dressed and present yourself. And do I think it matters? I do think it matters. Um, you can go to Macy's and buy a on sale suit for $40. Um, there's people on um, Facebook and Marketplace and cheap dog show suits that you can buy things. You just need like a skirt, a jacket, you know, and in some shoes that you can run in. Um, when it's the total picture of how you present your dog, that is what the judge is looking at. Um, because we're an owner handler, the politics of it you know, is gone. They're judging, you know, strictly on you, your dog, how well your dog fits the standard and how well the dog is presented. And if you show that pretty picture to them, um, you know, it, it has worked out for us, hasn't it, not, Katie? <laughs> it has. The other thing, <laughs> and I've, I've learned this actually from Katie, and that is have patience. You know, not all of this is going to come together in, you know, two or three dog shows. Um, I've, I've been showing dogs since 2004 on my own. And it's because I used handlers for a few years and I thought, man, this is expensive. I think I can do this on my own. And I found out that when I got into the dog show ring with my dog, I was free. There was nothing else. I couldn't see the crowds. I don't see the judge. I looked down at my baby and it's just me and my baby 
And I, it just makes me so happy to be doing this with them. That's my piece of advice. Good. That's a good one. Um, so my biggest piece of advice, I mentioned before that your, your breed doesn't help or hinder your um, placement. But what I will say is being new to dog shows isn't always easy. Um, there was a period of time that I almost stopped doing dog shows. You know, Penny is a, a big girl. She took a long time to grow and I didn't understand dog shows. I didn't understand exactly how they worked. I didn't understand what judges were looking for. I didn't understand the importance of all the little pieces of the puzzle that make a dog show. And I was getting frustrated and I was I was done. Like I was, I, my was, <laughs> we were, um, my mom and my mom's pretty active with the Otter Home group and her and I were actually driving to Colorado in, uh, right behind Nancy and Carmen. And I had told my mom that if, you know, we didn't, we didn't have a little bit of success, I was done. Like I was not going to do dog shows anymore. It wasn't for me. I was just done. And that's when <clears throat> Penny took back-to-back -to -back majors out of the amateur owner handler class. Um, so my biggest piece of advice is don't give up. Um, if you need support, reach out. There are other owner handlers here, like myself, Nancy, Carmen. Um, there's a lot of us. Tom Dev. Shows. What was that? Eileen Glennon. Eileen Glennon. Joey does a lot of her own stuff. Uh, they, there's tons of us reach out, ask for help. And sometimes it can just be one little trick that will make the whole difference for you and your dog. Um, and you're not likely to see a ton of success when you first start. And that's okay because you're still learning and your dog is still learning. And the whole experience is a lot to take in. I've been <clears throat> recently helping one of my friends that has an Airedale and one of the, the biggest things, she sent me a video of her showing. I said, now make sure you breathe this time. Because <laughs> um, it looked like she was trying to hold her breath and do everything as fast as she could. Um, but really take your time. You've paid the same amount of money as any other person at the dog show. You've paid for your few minutes in front of the judge and, and use those minutes and don't give up. That's, that's my advice. And it's a lot harder than it looks. So don't be discouraged. <laughs> If you watch people and it looks so easy and then you go to do it and it's not so easy. Don't pull a Katie. That's don't. why I it. <laughs> it's, it's a lot harder than it looks. When I train people to show their own dogs, I always uh, make the analogy that it's like a golf swing. If you just go swing and hit the ball, you might hit it the very first time. But the more you learn, the more there is to think about. And the more there is to think about, sometimes the more you get all like, oh my God, now I have too many things to think about. So if you can find a mentor that teaches you like just step by step, um, rather than trying to do everything all at once or having everything all in your head at once, that's um, a lot more helpful too. And it keeps you from getting too discouraged too fast. And I would and say, the other thing, the, oh, go ahead, Nancy. And the other thing is, even though you think that you know all that you need to know to, to present your dog and owner handler, keep an open mind. After 20 years, I learned a different way to hold my lead in order to present a particular dog um, the best way. And, you know, Katie will acknowledge this is that, you know, we have multiple dogs and the way that I show Beaker is different than the way we show Dazzle, which is different than we show Raphael. And so you have to kind of be flexible and be um, open to change on each dog that you decide that you're going to present um one of the common things that i've um helped some people with when they've asked me about starting is they're like well i don't have mirrors at home to practice and mirrors are usually up in a lot of training facilities so you can kind of watch yourself and critique yourself as you go almost like a, a, a dancer would um, but we live in an era where most of us have smartphones and you can prop your phone up, flip the camera around, and you can video yourself with your dog. 
and you can critique yourself that way at home. Um, Nancy said that she's spent many hours running up and down her driveway and I too have. I, I also have spent, <laughs> my neighbors have watched my performance over and over again. Um, but allowing yourself to have that feedback from your phone can be huge because you can see what you look like coming into the judge. You can see if your dog is really hitting um, the gate the way you want it to. Uh, you can even watch yourself and you can say, ooh, you know, I, I maybe didn't step where I wanted to, or I didn't do this, I didn't do that. And give yourself that, that feedback that you would only get maybe once a week at class. And there's always more to learn, no matter how long you've been doing it. There's always little subtleties that, that you can pick up. And, and once you gain a little bit of confidence where you won't be defeated, if somebody does give you um, advice, go ahead and ask other owner handlers that you think do a really good job to watch you or to video you or to say, you know, if after they've seen you show your dog, do they have any input? Um, Cause that can be really helpful too. Cause sometimes the things that you don't realize you're doing, even if you see a video, um, somebody else that's objective can say, Hey, you know, if you do this little thing, it'll look better. And they don't have to be within your breed at all. No. Best advice I've gotten are from hound people, not that don't even have dogs close to an otter hound. Anything else we want to add in, ladies? Does anybody have any questions? If you do, feel free to unmute your microphone and, and ask away. I'll take off the share thing. What are the biggest advantages of showing your own dog besides saving money? <laughs> uh but you know what are one of the biggest ad advantages <clears throat> i would say that that nancy kind of hit on it with her advice is that connection you have with your dog um i i like the idea that it that we are also breed representatives so we are out there with our dogs we know our dogs best and really uh dog shows are unique in that they have an opportunity for you to show off your breed and if you're there owning and handling your own dog, you're able to kind of participate with the public more like that. Because yeah, I've had a lot of people um, approach me after coming out of a um, owner handler ring, um, you know, so interested um, in our particular breed. And, um, you know, it's, it's a great way to showcase the breed um, to others. And uh, I think that is um, very, very important. Um, it can be a lot of fun too. You do have yep. to have a little bit of a sense of humor and you have to <laughs> be on yourself. Don't be, don't be hard on yourself or your dog. That's the best advice I can give mm -hmm. is don't be hard on yourself or your dog because you're gonna mess up. Your dog's gonna mess up. Your dog's gonna misinter misinterpret what you, said or what you wanted and it's it's not easy but be easy on yourself and have fun with it and make it a happy thing your dog yeah. is going to love to do it with you if you love to do it and if you're happy doing it and if you're miserable your dog is not going to be happy doing it and if you've done this for any amount of time we all have stories we all, all have stories <laughs> They <laughs> fail. That things did not go the way they were planned to go <laughs> at all. <laughs> on, on the other side, you know, when you do succeed, when you are standing there, um, either in the group uh, owner handler ring where you've just been awarded a placement, or if you're at, you know, the nationals and you're standing in line ready to get, you know, a ribbon that was awarded to you because you and your dog presented as well as anybody else in the ring, it is very, very rewarding. And um, I mean, every owner handler that I um, know of at this point has succeeded, you know, in our breed, they, they, they're succeeding. Mm -hmm. Just have to stick with it. Yep, most definitely. Do we have any more questions? No. 
Well, I just want to thank you ladies for a great presentation and thanks everybody for being here. Um, this video will be on YouTube in the Otter Home Club of America channel. Um, I'll have it up probably in the next couple of days or so and I will email uh, 